Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zeng here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Rank, where I climb the online VGC 18 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. Just kicking it with the Driftlum team that we've been using for the last couple of episodes. That last one, I feel like I actually learned a lot, um, because we went against one of those Cresselia teams, and it, it was really close. I think I, en I ended up, I was in a position to win the game, uh, got a little bit unlucky, but then I realized that I kind of misplayed a lot uh, earlier in the game, so I think... My decision making with this team can still be a lot better and because of the nature of a team like this it's very hyper offensive each turn matters a lot so I have to be a little bit better in my thought process in how I want to approach things and I just have to consider each turn because every knockout goes a long way for a team like this one so yeah if you haven't seen the last episode I highly recommend it those games were really fun um, it was against two relatively standard teams but the way the games ended up playing out were very, very different, even though my opponents had the exact same team comps. So yeah, uh, go check the last episode out. And as I've mentioned, um, NA Internationals is this upcoming weekend. It will be from Friday to Sunday. I, of course, will be commentating that. And if you want to go check out the live stream, all the details are linked in this description below. I think I'm also trying to pre-record episodes so that they go up right before the stream starts on Friday through Sunday. So hopefully I'll be able to get that done as we're going to find Optimize from Wisconsin for our first opponent of the day. Uh, running a uh, pretty interesting team, Lele, or sorry, I saw the Ludicolo and I was like, oh, it's going to be a rain team with Lele, Metagross, Zapdos, Landers. Like, if you throw Politoed on there, I think that's actually the exact rain team I was using earlier in the year. But there's no Politoed, it's a Tyranitar instead, so that's really surprising. Uh, so this should be interesting. Uh, because Drift Lele, I think, is an absolute necessity here. Blastoise is so good here. I do want to bring Hydreigon in this one, I'm not going to lie. Um, nah, B Pulu Pulu is still kind of tempting as well. Hydreigon matches up slightly better against the Metagross. Uh, I've got Draco Meteor. It's just the Metagross mainly, actually. Mm, kind of tough call. I am worried about the Lele enough, though, that I think Bulu might just be a better option. Uh... Hmm, I really want to think about this a little bit more. Okay, I've got Scarf Bulu too. I don't think Landorus comes out. What do I bring if I'm my opponent here? I bring Tyranitar for sure. I think Tyranitar, Metagross, Zapdos. Tyranitar, Metagross, Zapdos, and probably Lele. So if my opponent's going with those four, what's better? <laughs> it's still hard to say. I think I'm going to go with Hydreigon though, just to have another clear answer against the Metagross specifically, yeah. Could regret this. Um, I just, yeah, if my opponent brings Ludi or Landris, that makes my life easier, so I'd rather see those, but we'll have to see. Anyway, as always, if you guys enjoy Road Train, please share support by leaving a like in the video. I'd really appreciate it. And I really hope you guys come out and tune in into the stream for NA Internationals. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Um, Scott Glaza, who was my favorite commentator, and the reason I really got into commentating is actually returning, so that'll be really exciting as well. Him and Evan Latt were like the dynamic duo always for VGC, so yeah, that should be fun. It's going to be Zapdos Ludi coming out from my opponent here, which is not what I anticipated, but I will definitely take that. It's a free Tailwind on my end, and I've got Z-Move pressure right from the get-go. I'm just wondering if this Zapdos is buried. Or, sorry, seated. Doesn't look like it. So, yeah, I'm just going to go straight for the Tailwind here. And I'm going to go for the Psychium Z into Zapdos. I think... Yeah, Drift Lele is just really good as a combination against my opponent's entire team, especially because of Will-O-Wisp. Being able to hit the Metagross or Tyranitar and burn it will go a long way. Another fun combination is if Tyranitar comes in, I can actually just Rain Dance and Moonblast to knock it out because it won't have the special defense increase from Sandstorm. So that did happen once when I was playing with this team uh, in like a practice game, so I'm wondering if I can pull that off here. Either way, Ludicolo doesn't threaten me at all. Uh, and it doesn't go for a fake out because obviously it can't. Maybe going for a Hydro Vortex into one of the two or an Ice Beam. But either way, I will get my Z move off here. Ideally, it's enough to knock out Zapdos. Even if not, though, uh, Lele is obviously confirmed to be the fastest Pokemon out of uh, Zapdos, Lele, and Ludicolo. So that's a really good you know, uh, piece of information as well. And yeah, I mean, I, I think honestly this should be enough to knock out Zapdos. Uh, Zapdos normally needs Psychic Seed to survive this. But I am timid and not modest. So let's see. Yep, nice. Gets the one shot. That's really good. Um, Zapdos is just annoying. Here's a Z move coming out from my opponent's end. 
I'd rather see Hydro Vortex come out than any other Z move from my opponent's team. I think like the Electric Z move is more scary. Lele having a Z move is more scary. So it's good to get the Zapdos out the way. Um, I don't even think a Hydro Vortex knocks out Lele, but I am unconfident about that. If it's boosted by Scald, I don't think, or Surf, it won't be. If it's Hydro Pump, maybe. So we'll see. Yeah, it doesn't get the knockout. Nice. That's a really, really good turn one. That's pretty much exactly how I wanted it to play out. Ideally, Metagross just comes out right now, and I can just Psychic the Ludicolo slot. Or actually, maybe Moonblast, because Tyranitar could come in. But I feel very confident about this game already, um, and Metagross does come out, yeah. Mainly because I got Tailwind up, but my opponent didn't. Like, getting a free knockout like that with this team just sets you up so much. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to go for the Shadow Ball here into Metagross, and I'm going to go for a Moonblast into Ludicolo. I could have gone for a Will-O-Wisp, but Shadow Ball will put it in KO range from a Water Spout or a Dark Pulse, I think. So I don't want to risk missing Will-O-Wisp and getting no mileage off with Drifloom. Uh, and like I said, the reason why I'm Moonblasting here instead of Psychicking is because Ludicolo could switch into Tyranitar. And at this point, because I'm ahead, all I need to do is make even trades for my opponent. I can't afford to not get any damage off because that's how my opponent can claw back into this game. Most Ludicolos often don't carry Protect. You run Fake Out, Water, you know, Attack with the Z-Move, Ice Beam, Giga Drain as uh, was on my Z Ludicolo and pretty much every Z Ludicolo. So, you know, even if it stays in, which it does, uh, Moonblast should still do around like 60-70%. Uh, so, yeah. Either way, this is fine. Um, and if we'll see if the Drifloom faints this turn. Uh, Metagross actually helps to protect, which is even better, I would say, because that's another free attack I get off against the Ludicolo. Uh, which means Ludicolo will get one attack off here, but this next turn I can just Moonblast again. And I might go for the Will-O-Wisp this time around. Yeah, uh, Ludi is just going to Scald. And it is going to target down Lele. Fine by me. Yeah, so now I'm definitely going to bring out the Hydreigon. And this is actually kind of interesting. I could double up on a Metagross as well. I just don't want to risk missing will o -Wisp as we saw what happened yesterday. Um, the only thing I'm worried about is Tyranitar switching in, but even if Tyranitar switches in, I can just knock it out. Like, the better play is probably a will o -Wisp, Metagross and Dark Pulse Ludicolo. You know what? Yeah, I'm just going to go for that. Worst case is if I miss will o -Wisp, Ludicolo switches into Tyranitar. And he crits me with uh, Metagross. I don't think Metagross can one-shot either of these with a nice punch anyway. I guess the absolute worst case is if Metagross actually has Zen Headbutt, which it could. A lot of Metagrosses on these teams typically opt for Iron Head, Ice Punch, Stamp Stomping Tantrum, and Protect. Um, both Pokemon stay in. I do hit the Will-O-Wisp, though. I think that really should more or less seal up the deal for me. Um, because now the Metagross' is damage output. Like, you can't knock out either. I can maybe even get another Tailwind up or just a another uh, Rain Dance if my opponent's last one is that uh, Tyranitar. So, yeah. I mean, after turn one, I felt really good about this. Obviously, I don't want to choke it away. There actually is that Headbutt, so hitting that Will-O-Wisp was pretty important. That is not even going to come close to knocking me out. Actually, I mean, it does over half. So if I miss that, like I said, that actually could have been kind of ugly. Uh, because I would have been slower, because Metagross could have just protected on the last turn of Tailwind. Uh, as Lele comes out for my opponent's last one. Okay. Interesting. Uh, with Lele coming out... I'm just going to go for the Shadow Ball. I'm going to double up onto Lele here. Actually, is that better? Because Lele can't knock out Drifloom. Yeah, actually, no. I'm just going to Shadow Ball Dark Pulse the... Uh, how do I lose this? If Lele is Scarfed, maybe? No, I'd still win, I think. So the logic behind this play is, yeah, one Pokemon can protect. Maybe both go for... If both protect, then I just absolutely win because I go for a Tailwind again. Uh, right now, I just don't want to double up into something. Um, I think Dark Pulse probably knocks out Metagross. I was thinking of doubling up into Lele, but if I double up into it and it protects and Metagross knocks out Drift Bloom, that can be kind of ugly. No Protects comes out, which is really good. I think that should secure the win for me, but we'll see. Um, yeah, I, I think Life Orb Dark Pulse knocks out Metagross. Let's see. Okay, good. <clears throat> so the scary thing is if Metagross protects there, um, obviously, but like what I was thinking is, and my opponent had Dazzling Gleam, but yeah. Basically what I was thinking is you're not going to knock out the Hydreigon and the Drift Bloom. By Dark Pulsing Metagross and Shadow Balling Lele, what that's saying is, okay, um, if your Lele attacks but Metagross protects, then Drifloom will survive the turn. 
and I'll be able to get another Tailwind up, most likely. Um, if it's Scarf Lele, then you lock yourself into Psychic, but yeah, I, I think this is probably Scarf Lele, and he has to lock himself into Gleam. Kind of scary, just because I did end up with my last two Pokemon, but I felt like I was in control pretty much for the majority of the game, which, uh, yeah, mainly came from that lead. I'm trying to think if there's any way I could have lost, given the play that I did, Shadow Ball, Dark Pulse. I don't think so. I guess if it's not Scarf Lele and you Psychic the Drifloom, then I've got Blastoise and Hydreigon against Metagross and Drifloom. And then Lele maybe could protect. So yeah, for some reason I just was really set on that Scar being Scarf Lele and having Dazzling Gleam. Uh, I don't know if it was Scarf, but it did go for the Dazzling Gleam. So yeah, I, I guess maybe I should have just doubled up into the Lele, but if I double up into Lele, like I said, Lele protects, Metagross knocks out uh, Drifloom, but I'm actually in a pretty bad spot. So even though I was in like command for most of that game, still like the, the course of the game could have changed completely based off that one turn, which is kind of scary, honestly. But we do get a win there, so uh, we'll take it. Try to reflect on how I could have played better. Um, let's see. What happened in turn one? Turn one was perfect. Turn two, the Metagross comes out. Um, maybe I should have just gone for a Will-O-Wisp instead of the Shadow Ball. But I kind of like the logic that I have with the Shadow Ball. Really interesting team for our next game today, though. Volcarona, Milotic, Now Ego, Metagross, Zapdos, and Amoongus. So, uh, this is pretty scary. Uh, Volcarona is cool, so is Now Ego. I know that's actually picking up some steam uh, right now. Hmm. This is interesting. Uh, just because that does pressure Lele specifically a fair amount. Now he goes really good against my team. <coughs> Don't think I want to bring the Amoongus. <sighs> it's kind of tempting though. I, I think I still want to go Drift Lele here. Uh, Blastoise. I think Bulu is probably the better call here. Um, it avoids Rage Powders from Amoongus. Can one shot the Milotic and the Now Ego. I do have Stone Edge so I can hit the Volcarona and Zapdos as well. I don't think I like this matchup too much on paper, though. Uh, now Ego is able to put in a lot of work against me. The lead matchup is already going to be really tricky because it's like, do I... It also could have Trick Room, which you never know either, which is kind of scary. Mm, so this first turn is going to be interesting based off my opponent's leads. My opponent also has a bunch that threatens me lead-wise. Uh, Metagross being faster, Now Ego, Zapdos, with its own potential Tailwind uh, and Z-move. It's going to be Now Ego and Zapdos, okay. Yeah, this is scary. This is really scary. The trickiest thing is not knowing this now you go set. I'm so if it's scarf sludge bomb, I can actually just like get wrecked by it. That it actually just completely destroys me. Um I'm gonna tailwind for sure, but I have such a bad matchup against now you go. Maybe something like a actually yeah, a Mungus plus Blastoise would have been kinda nice here. I really want to make the, a kind of a risky prediction and just attack here with Lele because if I'm able to get it, because like I, at this point I expect Zapdos to also just set up its own Tailwind, right? So if Zapdos does Tailwind, I Tailwind and I protect Lele and Sludge Bombs Lele, I'm just screwed. So I'm hoping because this matchup is bad, I got to make a big play right from the get-go. So I'm just going to Psychic now, Eagle. This is probably not going to work out. No protects, no switches. Yeah, I don't know. Uh... I don't know about that. Yeah, it was just a sludge bomb. Now, this is okay if Zapdos doesn't tailwind, but if it does, then I'm really screwed, and I think it probably will. It's life orbed. Yeah, this is not going to be pretty. Although, maybe it's actually not the end of the world, because I do get to bring in Bulu now. Like, I didn't... If I protect Lele turn 1, the same play happens anyway. I guess I would just get a free Shadow Ball off with the Bulu. Um, you didn't expect him to anticipate maybe Scarf. I'm going to Rain Dance here. And Wood Hammer. Rain Dance to... Uh, should I Wood Hammer actually or Horn Leech? Tough call. I like the extra damage right now because I'm so behind. 
I want to rain dance just to decrease heat wave damage if Zapdos does go for it. And now he goes switches out, so good play there by my opponent as well. Uh, into Volcarona. Okay, that's not the end of the world. I can still win this game if I knock out Zapdos and set up another Tailwind, but that's easier said than done. Now Ego is just an awful matchup for me, and it's not a Pokemon I really took into consideration when building this team. <laughs> Stone Edge in that slot would have been a really sweet prediction, but Woodhammer actually still does a good amount there. Hopefully I don't get burned. Okay, good. And Heat Wave does come out. Okay. Yeah, oh my gosh, that does nothing to Bulu. Okay, so that's a good turn at least. Um, I think I actually will just go straight for a Shadow Ball and a Wood Hammer and hope that that puts Zapdos in another Shadow Ball uh, KR range. I, yeah, I, I really think I could still win this game, but it would... And Volcarona protects. Okay, that's that's the first step into winning. Um, this is going to be really interesting. If I, like, crit the Wood Hammer, that'd be nice. Actually, I don't even think a crit would knock it out. Ooh, that's such good damage, though. He's just heat waving again. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, that's literally doing nothing to me, so I'll take it. Now this is interesting. Do I? Does another Shadow Ball knock out Zapdos? It's so close, but I don't think it's enough. I think it'll fall just short. <clears throat> I think actually, what I want to do here is just go straight for the Shadow Ball onto Volcarona and a Will, or sorry, a Wood Hammer onto Zapdos. Yeah. I don't know, I really wanted to switch Bulu out, but I think my opponent, if I Shadow Ball Zapdos, it didn't knock out, and Thunderbolt knocks, like my opponent Thunderbolts to Bulu, that'd be really bad for me. Whereas right now, at least what I can guarantee is, I guess Zapdos could protect though. If that happens, that'd be bad. I should have thought about that a little bit more. Thunderbolt, Heat Wave, Tailwind, I just don't know what the last attack is. A lot of Zapdos just don't carry protect. No protect, which is good, because I think Woodhammer should just get the knockout. Shadow Ball does do a decent amount there. Zapdos is finally out the way. Okay. Okay, okay. Should survive from the recoil. We'll see what Volt goes for. It's gonna Bug Buzz, which is the correct play. So the thing is, I know Blastoids beat the Vol beats the Volcarona and the Nao Ego. So what is my opponent's last Pokemon? This is gonna be interesting. I really wanted to just Shadow Ball Zapdos and switch into Blastoise. Um, I just like, I think I lose the game instantly if Zapdos has a berry there or it survives. Or mainly, yeah, if, if it survives pretty much. Um, because that means it gets another Tailwind up if it has the berry and that I can't afford that. It's Metagross, this is so doable. Oh my goodness, this is crazy. Um, I actually want to just go straight for the Willow Spawn of Metagross and a uh, Water Spout. What about Tailwind Protect? It's just Metagross doesn't do enough to Blastoise right now. It shouldn't really be able to touch me. So if I burn it... Like, I basically want an extra turn of Tailwind, so I can Tailwind this upcoming turn. I just I don't want to Tailwind this turn. Because I actually... Blastoise is in a pretty good position right now. So even though that like I lost Lele right away, I still can totally pull this off. Just really hope I don't miss Willowisp Pier. Um, I really need to hit this one. So let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay. I always get so anxious using Will O Wisp. <laughs> Obviously because of 2013, but it's just like one of those moves where if you hit it, it's so good if you miss it, it sets you back so much. Okay, nice. Uh, the other question oh, Volcarona could be fast and it could just outspeed Blastoise and Giga Drain. I didn't think about that. That's really bad on my end. That's so bad on my end. Oh, he just. Oh, wait, he had Bug Buzz, right? So he probably wasn't going to go for Giga He probably didn't have Giga Drain. Oh, that's not good, though. I should have maybe protected because... Ah, that crit actually might have completely screwed me over. Oh, man. It's going to be really close. If I protect Tailwind there, I just was afraid of uh, Ice Punch one-shotting Driftblum. Because if my opponent doesn't crit there, I actually just win the game. Oh, that's so unfortunate. I think I have to Tailwind Protect here. <clears throat> Dang, that really sucks. Yeah, because without the crit, I'd have more HP, enough where I could just Shadow Ball Water Spout comfortably. 
Or actually, no, I would still need a Tailwind anyway. Um, if, if for some reason my opponent, like, Sludge Bombs the Blastoise and Ice Punches, I survive the Ice Punch, then I win, definitely. Okay, can I survive this? Oh my god. <laughs> okay, the rain stops, but I think that's fine. I'm just gonna rain dance here. Oh my goodness. It literally hung on with 1 HP. I think I'm just gonna rain dance and water pulse. The now ego. Because Blastoise shouldn't be able to... Metagross shouldn't be able to do enough damage to Blastoise. I just don't... Yeah, I, The reason why I Rain Dance is because I don't know if Water Pulse by itself is enough to knock out Now Ego. That also sets up my damage output so that Water Pulse knocks out Metagross in the end game. But Now Ego obviously could easily protect here. Yeah, if it protect, I, I I'm banking off it not protecting right now. It doesn't protect. Okay. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. If it somehow survives Water Pulse boosted by Rain, I'm going to cry. Okay. Please get this knocked out. Okay, well, I don't think Metagross can knock out the Blastoise right now. He's just going for the Iron Head onto the Drift Bloom. That's fine. I just need to hit Water Pulse. And for him... Yeah, so the crit earlier was scary just because it meant I took more damage. <clears throat> But the fact I hung out with 1 HP with Drifflin was so clutch. I'm trying to think if I misplayed by going for the Rain Dance Water Spot play. Metagross is going to protect. That's fine with me because I actually wasn't sure if Water Pulse would knock out. So now my opponent needs a double protect, but even if it gets it, um, I, he would need maybe a flinch or two. I don't know how much Iron Head does to Blastoise. He's going for the double. He does get it. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. So let's see. Gets the double, needs a flinch here still. Yeah, I'm not gonna. It still comes down to whether I water pulse or not. Yep, he's just iron heading. Oh, that doesn't even do enough for a 2 hit KO. <laughs> let's get the flinch though. <laughs> uh, Actually, maybe I should be protecting him because Iron Head is not a two-hit knockout. Yeah, I'm going to protect. Uh, now that I know that he needs to get two more Iron Heads. Oh, he protects. I don't agree with that. I think if you're my opponent, you should not be uh, protecting at this point. Because now I get an extra protect with my Blastoise. And at this rate, maybe Metagross actually faints from burn. So I actually should have just protected earlier. He's already gotten the double and the flinch, though, so odds of that are already really slim, but let's see if we can get it through. Fortunately enough, Iron Head's just not really doing that much to Blastoise, but this is still a scary position to be in. <clears throat> he could also get a crit. Let's see. I think he needs the flinch here, though. Uh, this needs to do 26 damage. Didn't even do 26. You've got to be kidding me. I mean, if he has Stomping Tantrum, that actually might just be enough to knock me out now. I don't think I'm even going to alternate between... I'm just going to Water Pulse. Oh my god. Is that enough to knock me out? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, that is officially the craziest game I've played with this team by far. Um, wow. Props to my opponent. I mean, you have to make those plays. That, that is his only win con. Um, he could have actually gone for a freeze too, but the chance of flinching with Iron Head is higher. <clears throat> like, yeah. I mean, my opponent basically needed... That's crazy. I actually thought the game was over once the stomping came out, but fortunately, Blastoise actually came through. Oh my goodness. I don't think I've ever had a game where two Pokemon hung on with one HP despite neither of them having a Focus Sash. That is one of the craziest things to happen in a very, very long time. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think about how I could have played that better. I, honestly, like, I, I feel like Bulu really proved its worth in that one because I was in a hole right from the start. I don't think I had any better lead either. 
Other than maybe a Moongus Blastoise, which is kind of interesting because I've got Sludge Bomb pressure, but still. Either way, I'm going to play a third game today. Really interesting team here. Mimilax with Mega Lopunny, Landorus, Coco, and Heatran. So, I mean, the first thing I see is Blastoise literally just knocks out everything. But Mimilax is really scary, especially in best of one. Uh, it's so scary, actually. <sighs> really hate going up against it, but I think I'm going to go Drift Lele, Blastoise for sure. It's just the question as always, who am I going to bring as the last one? Amoongus is kind of tempting, um, because I can one-shot Coco, I can potentially Spore, and if Trick Room goes up, that's my best answer. I don't think Hydreigon is the call here at all. Bulu is tempting, though, just because it outspeeds stuff. But for a game like this, I think I'm actually going to go Amoongus, because the way to win this is basically sweep with Blastoise. Oh my god, that last game is still crazy. Um, yeah, so one of the, you know, like I said, I could have Tailwind protected... But I wanted to capitalize off the extra turn of rain that I had with Blastoise. The only thing is I was vulnerable to crits there. and I did get crit there ultimately with the um, Volcarona. Because if Volcarona doesn't crit that Bug Buzz, then Metagross is probably in Shadow Ball KO range. But I think Tailwind Protect is still probably a better play there. And for some reason, if he has Bug Buzz and Giga Drain, I'd actually completely be screwed. Let me Heatran and Mimikyu here for my opponent, which is interesting. Um, basically, all I need to do is make sure my opponent doesn't set up Trick Room and I win this game, I think. Now, that very likely could be max speed Z Mimikyu, though. I'm actually worried about that um, if it targets Drifblum. So, I think the best... Uh, it also could be Mentorb. Hmm. I think what I want to do is just Shadow Ball and Psychic... Psychium Z the Mimikyu. Um, is that the... Okay. I'm just worried that Mimikyu Z moves Drifblum. If it does that, then my best play would be to Tailwind and Psychic Mimikyu. But if I Tailwind and Mimikyu does Trick Room, I'm absolutely screwed. Whereas with this play, I would trade Mimikyu for Drift Flum, worst case. He could also... Okay, he protects. Um, that's fine. Is that fine? Does the Z-Move break the Disguise? I actually don't know how this mechanic works at all. Yeah, a lot of these Mimikyu's don't carry Protect, so that's kind of annoying to go up against. Because I still don't know what set it is. Uh, but, you know, Protect, Trick Room, Shadow Claw, and Destiny Bond, presumably. If this breaks the Disguise, then I'll totally take this. I actually, I just don't know if it does or not. I think it does, right? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, okay. It's a weird mechanic. He turns subs, okay. I mean, that's fine. I want a Tailwind here. I really do. I could also Will-O-Wisp Mimikyu. will o being and taunting it at the same time would be very interesting, but it still could be Mentorb. I just think it should have the Z-Move, but Coco totally could have a Z-Move as well. Ah, not knowing Mimikyu's item is so annoying. Um, I don't think Shadow Ball knocks it out. It shouldn't. Um, but if you were max speed, you would have gone for the Shadow Claw turn one, definitely. So I don't think it is going to be max speed. So I'm going to double up into it. And if it is max speed and go for a Z move, then dang. <laughs> and he swaps out, okay. Into Snorlax. I'll take that, because now I can just bring in Blastoise and start Water Spouting. Not, not immediately, obviously, but um, I'm just going to Psychic, Heatran. I Drift won't avoid it, which is quite nice, too. Um, yeah, I mean, the name of this game is basically just getting Blastoise in at an appropriate time. Do I want a Rain Dance here? I don't even need a Tailwind or a Rain Dance quite yet. I want a... Mm, will o -Wisp maybe? Eh, Taunting Snorlax is probably better. Yeah, I'm actually going to Shadow Ball Heatran and Taunt Snorlax. Just to prevent it from belly drumming. I don't care if Lele goes down here. I actually wanted to go down if anything. Hopefully Shadow Ball breaks this sub. Okay, good. Taunt comes out. I could have psychic I also could have will o -Wisp, Snorlax and psychic the Heatran. Uh, you're just going to Heat Wave again. It's fine. And actually opted for Recycle, which is interesting. 
Now I'm going to go for a Rain Dance. Actually, I'll just Tailwind now. And go for the Psychic, which is free into Snorlax. It's either going to eat it up or it switches out. Uh, and something coming in takes a Psychic. Nothing on my opponent's team can really take a Psychic that well. So now I finally got Tailwind up. Uh, Snorlax does switch out, which I'd rather see, honestly, into Mimikyu. That's great because that's the Trick Room user that I'm most afraid of. I'm gonna get Tailwind up, and uh, Lele ideally gets hit by this Heat Wave and just faints and get Blastoise in. And now I can just Rain Dance Water Spout, and I don't think my opponent has any out against that. Okay, nice. Hopefully, no crit onto Drifton. Gets a burn, but that's fine. Uh, this is exactly the position I was setting myself up for, and I think my opponent's team is so Blastoise weak, which is why I am pretty happy right now. We know that the Snorlax has Recycle, that's not too surprising, but at the same time, sometimes you do see Mimikyu Snorlax teams where Snorlax doesn't have Recycle. So, yeah, now I'm gonna just Rain Dance and Water Spout. I don't think my opponent really can do anything. <clears throat> but, let's see. The, the reason why I'm Rain Dancing here is basically one... Um, I one shot, like if Snorlax comes out, I basically knock it out now after the rain. I'm pretty sure, given uh, the range that it's in. Uh, Landers, Coco, and the Law Pony will all faint as well. So, both my opponents, both my staying in. Maybe just a double protect here, but that's totally fine with me. Because, yeah, I just don't think my opponent has any out now uh, against Blastoise. So, he try and protects, that's fine. Does Mimikyu protect as well? Nope. That's even better for me, um, basically because like, yeah, now my opponent, like, I, I know I can get at least one guaranteed knockout every turn. Although, I mean, I guess if you double protect, then I know I can get two knockouts uh, in the upcoming turn. But, like I said in team preview, my way of winning this game was sweeping with Blastoise. Uh, my opponent wasn't able to get Trick Room Wop, uh, and by denying that, I think I put myself in a really good spot. Burn is slightly unfortunate just because it does put Drift Room on a timer. Um, now, Lot Pony actually could come out, but... I should still be out speeding it, and I can just will wisp it anyway. Uh, if it's anything else, then it doesn't even matter. And if I can take care of Heatran... I mean, even with Heatran on the field... I guess the scary thing here is I still lose the game if Blastoise goes down, because the Moongus and Drift aren't doing anything, but... The fact my opponent's sending out Snorlax is a little bit... Uh, I mean, it tells me that my opponent basically doesn't have much left. So I'm going to Shadow Ball and Water Spout uh, the Heatran slot. I think... If you had Law Putty, you would bring it out here to go for the fake out onto Blastoise. Uh, neither switch out, so this should just be a double knockout. I think Water Spot at full health in the rain should knock out the Snorlax, but let's see. If not, that could be a little bit scary. But if Coco is my opponent's last one, then Amoongus will beat it anyway. And yeah, that's just a double knockout cleanly. So this game definitely highlights how good Blastoise can be, and I think Drifloom actually supported it perfectly this game. Uh, but yeah, like the Z-move of Breaking the Disguise helped me out a lot that first turn. I was just really worried it was max speed Mimikyu, um, but I felt like the play I made at least covered for a bunch of options, even if it were max speed. Uh, Landers coming out here was obviously super good to see. I can just go for a Water Pulse and Shadow Ball. Yeah. Actually, I'll go for the Will-O-Wisp. Is there a reason to Will-O-Wisp there? <laughs> I mean... The thing about Landris, okay, yeah, my opponent's gonna forfeit. Yeah, the thing about Landris is you're often gonna be choice scarfed. If you're scarfed, I'm just gonna outspeed you and knock you out with Blastoise. If you're Assault Vest, I'm just gonna outspeed you and knock you out. If you have Protect, like my opponent basically had no way to win that after Trick Room didn't go up. I think that was the only way I could lose that. And because Mimikyu either wasn't max speed with the Z move uh, or just opted not to go for it uh, and ended up switching out, that put me up so much. And I knew once Mimikyu was out of the field and Trick Room didn't go up, I'd be able to Tailwind. Uh, and sweep with Blastoise, so my game played out how I wanted it to. Pretty happy about that. Uh, there's some crazy games today, especially that second one. I'm still trying to get used to that, but uh, yeah, that was a really fun episode, and I hope you guys enjoyed. So yeah, thank you guys as always for watching. As always, if you did enjoy, please share support by leaving a like. Uh, NA International is coming up just in a few days, so get the details on that in the description below. Like I mentioned, I'll be commentating it. You can follow me on Twitter. I'll be tweeting about the tournament the entire weekend as well, and if you guys are going, I'm looking forward to meeting you, some of you guys there. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time. All right, peace.